All right, we're on. This is Tabo Makama, and then we're live now. Um, we on T Junction, and uh, today I'm hosting. I call him the, the property champion, the township property champion, <laughs> Jason. We right. we're going to be interviewing Jason McComic, CEO of JC Listed Exemplar Retail, uh, which is a market leading development uh, organization. They are owners, managers of township and rural shopping centers across South Africa. And I think, in my view, they are amongst the best in town that have done so much for for this market of um, township economy and growing the retail space in terms of building uh, workable solutions that are going to house and help many businesses and reaching an economy in the in the business. And I think some one of the things that really is outstanding for me is just some some of the information that you know is brought out there by by the those that know better than us and i took a quote from a conversation that jason was having with one of the the interviews that he's done so he was laughing earlier <laughs> on when i met up with him and i said to him uh you know these are some of the things that you said <laughs> so it's, it's it's just uh very interesting to see how you know the conversation can grow so when we're looking at um at this look at uh, some of the things that have been said there 150 billion goes through spaza shops, 90 billion uh, or so goes through the food sector and approximately 10 billion goes through the, the hair care sector each year. And all of these is spaces where we find ourselves as um, organizations um, and many individual, you know, township based businesses that are that are doing it. So it's very interesting to to then get to see that all of these things are really highlighted in how one can be able to grow the business and, and and make it work. So Jason, welcome and, and thank you very much no, for making time. For me, yeah. Cool. So um I think the first question is is really to get to know you, to get to know who's Jason, um who's Jason McCormick. Um I think I've gotten to to like what you're doing and, and the name has become familiar in most of the circles that you know when one talks about property and one talks about township economy your name pops up when one talks about uh, how the empowerment, you know, conversation needs to happen post riots and a whole lot of things. But tell us a little bit about yourself and, you know, who are you and, uh, you know, how did you come about into this particular industry? Uh, long story. Um, again, <laughs> I'm Jason McCormick. I'm the CEO of Exemplar uh, Retail. I'm also the managing director of McCormick Property Development, <clears throat> which kind of gives a bit of the history um, mm -hmm. as to how I got to be where I am today. We are 40 years old this year as McCormick Property Development. Yep. Um, and it was a company started by my father. Nice. And so that's how I came in into it. And there's a lot more I'll, I can speak on that. Um, back to Jason. I'm, I'm 44 years old, father of two, uh, married, and yeah, been doing this all my life. Um, wow. So I basically went, grew up in Pretoria, went to high school down in KZN, uh, uh, University in the Western Cape, uh, came back, did a, a almost a full gap year, uh, learned <laughs> more than I probably did in, in, in four years at Varsity than I did in my gap year, sure. um, had to struggle uh, to try and make ends meet in Europe, um, and then came back and joined my father um, 20 plus years ago. Um, in McCormick Property Development and was made Managing Director in 2011 um, and listed Exemplar Retail on the JSC with the then 20 shopping centres. Um, and we're the only pure township retail focused retail on the JSC. Um, it's all we do. Um, as, a, as a company, we've done, done in excess of 80 developments in the 40 years that we've been in business and it's all that we've done we've done eight, eight, eight zero eight zero developments wow. yeah yeah um they included two two one uh, for the uh was it kwazulu finance corporation we did an office block and we did a, a residential development in mozambique otherwise everything has been retail so it's all that's all we know <laughs> yeah that's fantastic yeah 100 well, it's almost all we know <laughs> <laughs> but it, it seems to be something that it's not only you and your dad doing in the family the entire family has really adopted into this um property space and you guys have really grown this to to become a very strong mccormick um presence uh thing yeah you know it was founded by my, my, my father and my mother um nice. in the early days um my mom was the secretary and my dad was everything else 
Um, and from that, as the business grew, um, particularly in the early rural developments, you know, we really got a sense of the impact, the social impact it was having. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and from that, it was in just it's, it's a very easy business to get sucked into when you see the the socioeconomic benefit that these areas are getting, the uplift, just the joy in people's faces on an opening day. I'll never forget it. Gianni Plaza, 1987, um, Whoa. was the day that I it changed my life because I just saw the massive impact um, in the old Gazankulu homeland, it was mm, called at the mm, time. Mm. And yeah, I think I was eight or nine at the time. And and um, many people were not born. I'm not going to look at them. <laughs> and I'm not even going to say a lot. <laughs> but and, and, and that's how we ended up. We all got sucked into the business because yeah. you know it was it was just the business was growing and and it was doing great things along the way. So it, it was easy to to be aligned and believe in the story. Nice. Um, and that's I, I suppose that's one of the great things that's benefited us to this day. Is, is you know. All of this wouldn't be possible without the team that we've got, you know, along for the ride with us. Um, they all, we've got a singular vision, a single purpose. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we all love what we do because we see the incredible impact that it has working with the communities that we do. And it's important to know that the majority of the local communities that we develop, we develop in partnership with. So they've got equity schemes in the development. We hold hands with them. We've yeah. got a local first dictum. So we really try and stimulate the local economies where, we, where we're developing. And with all of that positiv positivity that, that is, mm -hmm. is evident when you open a new shopping center and go back there a year, two, three years later, and you see the, the ancillary development that, that, it, that it's brought, brought along, um, we've got a great team um, sure. that we're working with that are all – also caught up so the family's grown um we're well over 100 people now um, and, and, and it's and and not only is, is the family growing i saw even you know you're expanding the office space and mm, very so futuristic but we're going to touch on that i don't want to yeah, sure, sure, <laughs> spoil sure. alert. i don't want to get into that and, and really spoil it but now jason tell me a little bit more about your your life as a businessman right mm -hmm. you come into a family of an entrepreneur mom and dad working on into a business some someone could have said look this is not for me i don't want to be almost given told this is my way this is where mm -hmm. i'm gonna go how do you start shaping your thinking more into a business person it's it, it for me it was very easy uh, very fortunate we you know we've got a very tight-knit family mm -hmm. um and working side by side with my dad um, you know, I got to learn in, in the University of Life yeah. um, so much more than I would have, you know, otherwise have done. Um, so in terms of, you know, we've always been taught to, to tread the moral high ground, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. to, you know, the, the, the road is long um, mm. and, and your reputation is never worth one slip up. Yeah. Um, and, you know, 40 years down the line, we still stick true to our dictum. We, you know, our word is our bond and we try to tread the moral high ground as much as we can. Which, um, yeah, kind of be exemplar. Yeah, it, it, it's it's actually. I asked myself, where does that name come from? Exemplar. Exemplar. Yeah, because it it for me is like we want to be exemplary. Yes, hundred percent. Yeah, exactly. Like, does that come from yeah, that? Yeah, hundred percent. So you know, we were <laughs> we were in the midst of our of our listing process, the pre yeah. the pre listing process in late twenty seventeen. We ended up, we were supposed to list in, in, in April, and then we ended up listing in June. Um, the listing process is quite odious. <laughs> but isn't that everyone's dream that we want to go and get no listed? No ways. Uh, anyway, <laughs> you know, but anyway, be that as it may. So yeah. we, we were looking, we were thinking of different names for it. And it was at the time when the Steinhoff scandal came out. And then you had Resilient Gate. Yeah. Um, and the, the property market crashed. And, um, you know, we just... It was something that we've always held ourselves up to be is, yeah. you know, be the shining light, be the beacon, be the, be the moral compass. And at the time it was something that just struck, struck true with us that, you know, in, in this time of turmoil uh, yeah. and, and lack of trust, we could be this, uh, this company that's always been what we are. Uh, we've just never been listed before. Um, you, you always want to stand out. I mean, I mean, I must say, I must say that uh, as an individual, I've experienced you as someone who's just a very non-conventional, but, very hard on the model high ground you know you always mm. keep up to your very high standards and no, you know, doing what is right is 
is consistently there and you want to push for no you know, my, you know as i said my dad said there's nothing more valuable than your reputation nice you know and there is there is nothing more and so and all it takes is one one even half slip sure. to to ruin all of that all the hard work all the dreams that's fantastic yeah, yeah. fantastic so i just want to um highlight this is the tabo makama for t junction i know that we lost our our initial connection on 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 twitter spaces and but I see that we've had individuals uh, joining on YouTube live, and I see you. Welcome and thank you very much for joining us. I'm with Jason McCormick from Exemplar Retail uh, mm -hmm. Property Organization, and and I th I think what you're going to find out today is really the conversation of property, the opportunity, and just business in general. Some fundamentals. We've already touched on the model side of things. We've already touched on how it's become a generational business from your own organization. So some of our listeners that really go into this particular space they they get to understand the fact that you know there are so many things untold rules that we always talk about mm -hmm. on t-junction to say they there could be formal schools for mba but there's mm -hmm. no school for entrepreneurship yeah. right there's no school for businessmen for, there's no school for things that you're going to learn mm -hmm. that no one is going to teach you you're going to have to get burned you're going to have to do something about it right but in in in, in learning in the property space it's always um you know i People talk about rich dad, poor dad, and mm. say, no, you have to invest in property. You have to invest in things that are long term. Some of the things are just untold. In your view, the property business is not easy, but to flourish, you know, what makes your business constantly achieve its goals, you know, and being able to build such big assets and continue to go from one leap to another um, without getting you know, too technical about it mm. <laughs> because, you know, some of the things can be technical, but what are some fundamentals that one can think about in, in really building your business um, in the property space? I think dedication, drive, attention to detail. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've already spoken about the sense of purpose, you know, with, with what we're doing in the communities that we're working with and bringing what we do. Um, there's a lot on the line, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and it's an incredibly focused business you know the yeah. retail is detailed they always say um you know for me it's the most exciting po portion of property sector of the property market because it is complicated yeah it's not, you know you've got you've got consumers wants desires aspirations needs and then you've got various retailers that you've got to mix in a, in a melting pot and, and i hope you cook the cook you know cook the, <laughs> cook the cake right yeah um for for what the community wants but you know for me that's it's, it's a big part of the fun of it is is working with the community and 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 making sure that you deliver something that everyone's proud of. Mm -hmm. um, so, what makes us sets us apart from everyone else? I don't know. I, you know, I'm not looking over my shoulder, looking at everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so you're running your own race. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, yeah. what, you know, what, we we we're in a great space. Um, we are unique. Mm -hmm. um, in, in the way that we do things, you know, we, we hold hands a lot more frequently with people, I think, than a lot of other people would have. Um, mm -hmm. and, you know, to the extent that, that there's been some significant black shareholding, um, sure. in the majority of all our malls. Sure. Um, and yeah, it's, we built a lot, a lot along the, along the way. I, so, I think so just break down that a little bit when you're saying majority black shareholder, you, so you, you find. Black business partners, no, communities. So, 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 so they've got major shares in it. Okay. Not, not particularly the majority shareholders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but up major to share fifty, up to sixty percent uh, in in Diplof and Sweater. Wow. Um, whereas in a lot of our others, up to fifty percent, thirty percent, which we'll will then fund. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's that that's the that's fantastic. That's, that's historically fantastic. been the model that we because we've I mean with. I mean. You know, being honest, someone would think, "Ah, oh, these white guys are just coming into yeah, the township and, and and taking away." And I've I've seen how vocal you become around the working together to to actually make things happen. You were you were on the ground in the eve of the riots and mm -hmm. post the riots, you know, and and doing a whole lot of things. And we'll talk about you know some of the things that you do in the in the township. But in in, in looking at some of the technical knowledge that you have in your team mm -hmm. what are some of the 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 critical things that you make sure you don't go without as you go into some of the the projects the type of people that you want to always work with and you know the type of communities what are some of the challenges that you face in 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 communities i mean you and i were just talking about another community which is very difficult mm. to get into but it's fundamentals of 
really doing something as an entrepreneur. I think as a businessman, what are some of the the things that you do as part of your groundwork to get buy-in mm. and to build on the assets? No, listen, at the end of the day, it's, it's the community's asset. So if mm-hmm. we don't have buy-in from the community, we're not coming, plain and simple. Sure. Uh, you know, because if the community is against it, then why are you trying to push the elephant uphill? You know, yeah. <laughs> you know the, and you're only going to have trouble going forward. Um, you know, fortunately, we've we've worked well with people. At, you know, we don't do advertising, so all of our stuff comes through word of mouth. Generally speaking, through people that we've worked with. Sure. So we get good references from people. We, you know, we know. You know, just at the end of the day, it's it's trust. It's a lot of it. It's, yeah. a, lot, it's a lot of trust. You know, we, we we're old school in in our way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, we're a fam- family family business. Even even though Exemplar is very corporate, and you know, we've got in house counsel and, and everything else. We do everything by the book. Everything is one thousand percent by the book. Sure. Um, but but it there's still a lot of you know there's still a lot of groupthink. Um, there's huge entrepreneurial spirit in, in the business, which which would part of what makes it as fun as it is um, to, to, to be to be developing. Even in times like this, when when, when things the chips are down, <coughs> you know, you know, a lot of the financial analysts say to me, you know, are you not worried? You know, ESCOM's failing, yeah, water is failing, sewerage is failing. And I was like, you know, for 40 years we've been developing in, in the homelands in the rural areas that didn't have, you know, mm. they had ESCOM, mm. but they didn't have water, they didn't have sanitation. Sure. So, you know, we've we're proficient in in swimming upstream, uh, I think, <laughs> and, and and have managed to to create a business out of it. Um, and I think it's it's hard work and dedication. Uh, there, you know, there's there's months that go by we've been working 16, 18 hour days. You know, just week in, week out, week in, week week out. Um, a lot of risk. Obviously, property there is there is a lot of risk, and there's a long uh, a long timeline on it. But it's a vibrant space. So you know, for you entrepreneurs out there, there's you know the the the, the peri-urban townships. They, yeah. they you know the, the the rural urban migration is huge. So you know the backyard Amarumi yeah. is yeah. is is becoming huge business. Oh man, uh, and, you know, and, and all you need to do, you know, my dad started the business with one shop, hmm. a single single land shop in in Mukwadi. It's now called wow. in Denver, uh, and that's all you need is a single room, and then a second room, and then that's how you. How you start? It's just like you know, so, and and the reality is, you know, for your listeners, for your people, you know, yeah. property is a long term game. It is capital intensive, and you have to be patient. Um, you know, it's but go to the right areas. Go to where there's where there's demand, where there's population growth, economic growth. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so you touched on a very important part of the conversation. I mean, one of the things that um, some of the guys have sent as questions was that. You know the the property business can be unforgiving in terms of mm-hmm. going in and uh, investing and not getting the return, or maybe waiting too long. Right? What has been some of your key learnings in in terms of the decisions that you've made as in as as investment decisions in in terms of the size and time that you 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 know a person should be looking at in going into a commercial <laughs> a commercial deal? <laughs> We're going to start building Liratong City. In in June, we've been on that project since two thousand and eight. What, like two zero zero eight? Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> when we did when we did Market Plaza with the Bakaha yes. Bamake uh, outside Zanin, my I think my dad had been working twenty years on that side. Definitely. So, but obviously it gets to a point. So you know, yeah, in, in yeah. rural stuff, it takes about doing what we're doing on the scale that we're doing about between five and seven years mm-hmm. um, to get to get through the whole community process to get all the rights to get everything yeah. in place the services um and everything so it's it's certainly not a um not a quick fix yes. like uh, so no, no, no. It's so, so it, it, it does no listen and it can take time and, and community, yeah. communities do put pressure on government to help speed up the process nice. because obviously we find often that that you know there's just a lot of processes that need to be followed and mm-hmm. sometimes they take longer than the communities are certainly willing to wait. So, and, and how big? How big do you still want to build uh, your business as as, as as exemplar retail? Um, I can tell you that you know, traveling, going to different townships and different rural areas, they need is still great. Mm. You know, uh, I can surely say that there is still potential. Particularly, you looking at Eastern Cape as one of the key areas. I was like, oh, mm. these guys are thinking. You know, 
very wild. <laughs> Eastern Cape. No, listen, I, when, love, when... I, love, I, love, I love the rural areas. Yeah. I'm often quoted as saying it's my favorite place to develop. That's where we have the biggest social economic impact yes. is, is when we take, you know, the town all the way into the rural areas uh, ah. by taking... And I love the Eastern Cape. It is it, it smacks back to my, my roots, my history of, of ah. rural, rural retail. It is a, 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 a if, it's it's a developed market, but it's an unsophisticated market right. in the way that it's been developed. Um, and you know, when we went to Flagstaff, so we've now got four assets currently in the Eastern Cape. We'll start. Um, we programmed to start at the end of this month in Indutra. Uh, sure. which should be our fifth our fifth asset in Eastern Cape. But when we went to Flagstaff, people were getting their grants in the rain. You know, uh, it's just t- terrible conditions. We've mm-hmm. kind of turned the town on its head because now everyone can queue indoors for their grants. Suddenly everyone else in town is having to clean up, you know, how they were looking after the, the pensioners, the gores, yeah, yeah. the mkulus. And, um, yeah, it's just nice to have that kind of knock-on effect. But so, so listen, we're doing a lot of um, rural up in Limpopo as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, we all enjoy doing the rural stuff. Um, 12, 14,000 square meters of single anchor, generally speaking, although Varani's double anchor and and the one in Igutra is also uh, double grocery anchored. Sure. Yeah. That's fantastic. I mean, it's, it's such a growth for black entrepreneurs. And I mean, you've worked with the likes of Drip and Batu. Mm. In your last uh, no, no, conversation, no, 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 with, no, no. Uh, I've only worked with with Theo on. Oh, with Theo, okay. O- only on Tris. On, he hasn't. He on has, Tris. We don't have a store of his yet. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> but then I've seen. I'm uh, working on it. All right. Okay. But I see Tris is, is is really one of the initiatives that you run, which is the Township Retail Investment Summit. No, 100%. which which in its founding and in its core is to have conversation around how to make uh, the township more inclusive and for mm. business people particularly those that are listening today. And um, if you're joining us for the first time, this is Tabo Makama on T-Junction. We're really happy to have you. And um, I'm talking to Jason McComick, who is from Exemplar Retail. And uh, we're talking about entrepreneurship in the property space and what's our, what are some of the opportunities that exist, you know? Um, is it is it something that one can go into on a quick basis? Is it something that one can build on? How long does it take? All of these fundamental learnings and stuff that we want to bring on to, to this platform so that you can get to understand what is it and what does it take. So tell us a little bit about Tris, you know, um, how did you come about it? And um, in looking at you choosing the township commercial property space and malls, mm-hmm. you know, not a lot of people go into the township. I mean, there's many who say there's a risk, there's so many things, but yet we see your malls popping up in townships, the very same place that many individuals are running away from. But yet when they talk about statistics, they're talking, others have claimed there's 900 billion in the township. Others are saying there's 500, there's 250 (coughs) billion in terms of value that comes out of the township. And when you look at the growth aspirations of retailers, uh, many retailers have made billions out of townships. You know, what role does your organization and Tris, you know, play in terms of making sure those dreams actually Mm. come, you know, come to life? 100%. 100%. I think, well, Tris was a was a byproduct of the organization and organizational thinking that existed at the time. So I think uh-huh. in the one and two, you know, the, the the founding kind of principles of the two are very similar that we need. And from my earliest days in the industry, um, I've bemoaned the, the over-concentration of retail in, in South Africa, three major, four major supermarkets. Mm-hmm. For us, five major, you know, Woolworths is coming in six major major fashion chains. Yeah. Um, four major banks now with Capitec, five major banks with a few guys coming up. It makes it it makes it very difficult um, for new entrants coming in. It makes it mm-hmm. difficult for mm-hmm. me as a shopping centre developer. Yeah. Because I've only got a few doors to knock on, and so the balance of power is not in my favour. So, ah. so what we're trying to do is 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 through the organisation, through um, you know our Kazi Collab, mm-hmm. try and see how we can get um, a lot of these township entrepreneurs, how mm-hmm. we how we can stimulate them, ment- mentor them, and get them up to running their own brands, um, mm-hmm. very much in the way that that Lecau and and Theo have done yeah, with Tripimato on their on their, on their on their own yeah. accord. Okay, but but our, my, our dream is to to you know create the next 10, 20 of them. Sure. You know? See if, see if we uncover them wherever we we can uh, because we've got the platforms we've got the space to let them shine 
Um, and that's one of the exciting things is, is we've got all these retail platforms. Yeah. We haven't even really scratched the surface on how we can use those platforms to to create positive change um, so, so on an ongoing say, basis in, so in, in the would, township. Would you say that there's there's a lot of opportunity for guys that can go, can multiply? Some people that own who can products, scale up. who can yeah, scale up. Yeah, in, 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 in your respective spaces? Well, listen, you know, I think one of the fundament, founding principles that m- my father had when he started, you know, the Mlungus didn't come to the areas he was, he was, he was taking retailers to. So he had, ah. he would have a, he would have a box or a school supermarket and then the smattering of pep and, and, and then he would have local, local black business. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's, and although unfortunately, the farmers, the local pharmacists, the local doctor don't do as well anymore yeah, um, yeah. as they did in the old days, the, mm. which is why we, we're looking at, at how do you take, you know, people that have got great products and we've got a number of them in, in the Tembisa Casa Cola who do yeah. incredible work and are definitely scalable. Now, tell me a little bit about that because I saw it's just some amazing work that you guys are doing in the Colab. Uh, I'm, not doing, I'm not doing it. We just gave them the space. That, you know, that's all, oh, that, so it's that's, a different organization that's doing it, but in your in your No, no, no. Space. So we found township entrepreneurs. We brought them together yeah. into that space. So that's ah. their platform. So they wow. they pay for lights and water. That's all. They that's it. They don't pay rent. We set them up and then they... Wow. They, they, and it's the most prominent shop in the mall, basically. It's on the busiest entrance. <laughs> yeah. Um, and 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 a number of those brands are just flying. It's, it's they're going from strength to strength. I'm so proud of it, proud of how they're doing. Yeah. Um, and that's what we're trying to do. Is we're trying to build township brands. Um, to, yeah. To give Mr. Price a run for their money. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is fantastic. Yeah. So now, now now tell me, um, is there future business that you envisage will come out of the township? Probably Plenty. in 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 vertical businesses that really pop out of this. We've got a lot of entrepreneurs that are joining us today, and I think they have a lot of questions as well that they're asking. Um, I'll check now what the questions are. But I think in in in, in bulk, the, the biggest question that most of the guys have is that where the opportunities? Where are the opportunities? You know, there's a mall, it's a building, there's property, there's vet, you know, there's vertical business that come out of it. Where are the business opportunities? And I'm gonna reach out here to check a little bit of this. Well, listen, thing. I, I think in you know Telecoms data, you know, getting getting cheaper data out into the into the communities, yeah, uh, definitely an opportunity. Last mile is definitely an opportunity mm-hmm. that it, that exists. Um, Let I me see. There's, you, there's you get questions. Some questions yeah. Here. yeah. Um, okay. Are you guys getting audio? Okay, fine. Um, let me see. Says you've got a stunning <laughs> track record working in <laughs> in communities. Vatiswa says Eastern Cape, please. Uh, I love hearing that demand is rife there. I'll be yeah, it will be a win win. We're in Eastern Cape. Where about yeah? So so Vatiswa, tell us in where about in the Eastern Cape. So so what opportunities? So I see someone is asking about opportunities for outdoor. Outdoor. Yeah. So what opportunities exist there from an outdoor perspective? Yeah. So there's there's our multiple. We've actually just uh, we just hired a um, a a new guy uh, mm-hmm. to handle all our outdoor all our non GLA stuff. Okay. Um, he's currently on a on a, on a honeymoon or up in the Maldives <laughs> or something, and he's just joined us. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So we're looking at at yeah all these other platforms. Uh, and and just leveraging the space, so there, there are huge opportunities. If you look uh, more, particularly for out of out of home, in yeah. um, and even in mall advertising, our our busier malls will do 1.3 to 1.5 million pairs of feet a month. What? Uh, so it's a lot of sets of eyes reading it's what easy. what, what adver- yeah, 100 <clears throat> percent. Average is about 400 to 650, I would say. Uh, but but our urban malls and uh, polar mall. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, those do over over a million pairs of feet a month. So for out of home, for you know, it's a lot That's of crazy. It's a, <laughs> more advertising. It's, there's, there is a lot of opportunity. We haven't tapped it fully yet. There's no doubt yeah. about that. Yeah. But as I said to you earlier, before this, I'm we're too busy building shopping centers. Yeah, no, I, I've seen <laughs> you running around and at I've the seen moment. You, yeah. yeah, in 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 different places at a time. So I think one of the things that that I have as as as, as a question that has always you know um, you know went into gone into my mind is the fact that you 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 always embrace the 
the way business is is run you 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 one guy that i found you embrace diversity of thoughts you 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 make time for for people and you you always you always open up for 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 bring new ideas isn't that a bit um overwhelming for you don't you find yourself running out of time and mm. uh, and not not being able to actually get to the most important things listen the most important things are family uh, yeah. to me and there's no you know Although I don't get as much time as I often would like, yeah. um, you know, certainly if in in the uh, I've become very good at prioritizing the time that I do have. And nice. when 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 we're working, we're working. We're, we're working flat out. And as as I've alluded to before, we've got a great energy in our team. We've got a great yeah. team yeah. that's purpose driven uh, in what we're doing. And it's just we're in a great space to be to be in. Even though that you know they're, they're clapping us on the interest rate and, and they're making it very difficult for fixed capital investment at the moment because yeah. you know it is very expensive where the, where the rates are now sure. um but i don't know where, where that uh, 50 basis point no, came it, from it, listen it caught us all by surprise <laughs> we saw it in the rant dude i don't understand <laughs> who who kaiser was was you know drinking with but anyway we won't, <laughs> <laughs> we won't even listen, go there yeah, well, let's just say let's hope it's at the top now and and we'll yeah. start we'll start seeing it easing although what we read in 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 America seems fairly hawkish, so Just like we'll see where it goes. No, so so in, in asking that question, I really want to tap into your your business leader, um, you know, hat. In that, many entrepreneurs find themselves overwhelmed with uh, taking care of the important things such as family, and really working out a solution around um, how do I prioritize this? How do I deprioritize certain things in in in, in the space? Um, what role would you say your team plays in making your life a little bit easier in terms of uh, planning, execution, and also growth in, in this particular instance? Because some of the entrepreneurs that we have on, on the platform, they, you know, they're going in, they're scaling up. Um, some of them are just one-man shows. Uh, I think the guy who's asking about um, the outdoor advertising, he works with a small team, Kingsley. I, I happen to know Kingsley and I mm -hmm. see online Neo Mafolo. Neo works with a, a group of individuals in the NGO space. So she does a lot of work for women and, and stuff like that. So these are some of the business uh, leaders that in their own right, mm -hmm. they need to potentially focus, potentially work on most important things. Mm -hmm. What are the, some of the key rules that you have when it comes to that in working with, 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 with your team in making your life maybe a bit a bit simpler so in, in, we've grown quite quickly since we've in the last five six years since you know and then through the listing mm -hmm. um so certainly and through that listing process we've had to corporatize a lot more so there's a lot more directly responsible people everyone knows oh. their box but before that we were all doing everything oh. uh you know we were very seat to the pants very entrepreneurial family business um, I, I've been juggling so many balls yeah. my whole life, uh, my whole business life up in the air. Um, and, you know, I've often said that it was, it, it was waitering. Yeah. When, when I was a student, I worked four years as a waiter. Sure. And it was that process of understanding, remembering you still had dessert to go out here mm. in table mm. two, you needs to be cleared. This one wants the sparkling water. And, and, and you make a mental you, note of 100%, that. hundred percent. And that way I, I learned to program the ordering in my mind. I suddenly knew that I've got six, seven, eight developments out with at various stages. How, who needs what, when? Um, and so that certainly helped me a hell of a lot. Mm -hmm. But then, as I say, as we got more corporate, um, we've had to write rules and regulations and everyone knows exactly what box needs to be ticked. Um, I've got an incredible uh, PA who does a lot of, and, and an incredible, even more incredible wife. Um, so <laughs> they, they keep my, my, my life in check. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it, it is fairly hectic uh, with a lot on the go all the time. Sure. But, but it's good to have good people around me. And, and just coming back further back into as you scale up, you have yeah. to you have to have these systems in place because you can't do everything yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. very important. You need to have trusted people, people you can trust. Mm -hmm. And you need to have clear structure and guidelines as to what are the parameters because that person needs to operate. You can't manage a manager. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. At the end of the day, if you're going to have someone else in your, and you're growing your business, you need to have a person that you can trust and they need to know what their objectives, what their parameters are. You know, what's expected of them um, and where they can't step. And then you can go ahead and, and grow your business without having to worry about, you know, every second of what's happening over there. 
Sure. Um, you don't have to always look over your shoulder. No, think, no are these people doing what they're supposed to be no, doing? Listen, for me, it's amazing to have watched you know, young guys grow in the business and come and bring me back work mm. that I can see they've got cooked. They're, they're, yeah. they're, they've been thinking, <laughs> you know, they've redesigned shopping centers to, to cut out the cost. Wow. It's a big part of what we're doing is cost, mm-hmm. cost management, you know, before we even on, on plans to take out all the unnecessary costs. Sure. And yeah, it's just great to see our guys grow uh, in an environment like that. Sure. So do you have a view of Plus, minus, how many businesses uh, have been empowered through the exa- exa- black network, black businesses? So, AD developments, um, you know, we've got, what, 31 developments at the moment. We've got about three, 2,000 tenants. I would say 10% of them of those tenants are yeah, historically disadvantaged black tenants, but it used to be a lot higher. Oh, in in the in the, remember I said to you in the early days, my dad yeah, had to have yeah, about yeah. up to thirty uh, yes. percent. But our tar- our tar- his target was always to get fifteen um, percent of the tenants paying ten percent of the of the rental. So they were always being subsidised by the nationals. Nice. Um, always a lot smaller space as well, mm-hmm. so that the costs were more manageable. Um, but yeah, yeah. I, I, can we be doing more? Certainly, I think we, you know, we could be doing a lot more. There's a lot, a lot of businesses that we've seen come and fail that had good ideas but just didn't have the uh, have the wherewithal to to hold it together. Um, so, do you think that that particular gap that exists then with those the high failure rate, such structures as that, um, you know, incubator would actually yeah, play a definitely. very big role. Do you do you um, give any advice to to well, the that's incubator? Why, that's why I was asking you: is why is this here, not in the township? <laughs> come, yeah, no, I wish come, I could come, replicate come, my space yeah, into different yeah, spaces. Exactly. Yeah, come, come give training out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, no, definitely, it's, it's it's some of the things that we we, we want to you know focus on. Uh, we do help some of the businesses um, in our space. For instance, we 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 work with one corporate and 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 developing SMEs as part of our, our yeah. DNA, but. The biggest challenge that we find, right, is the fact that when we go out to go and do development of SMEs in the township is not having those uh, structures that um, yeah. are existing. But I like what you're doing there because the, the space that is dedicated to those entrepreneurs, it makes it easy for people like us who are business coaches and mm-hmm. and, and who, who are developers of entrepreneurs who can go into that space. And that that is why for me, township commercial property is something that is overdue. Mm-hmm. You know, I grew up in the township. We grew up um, having to see one mall in Waputatswana. You know, oh, when like you go it. to Ma, 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 Ma Bupani, uh, City. What do you yeah, mean? Okay. Yeah. Central City. In Central City. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we grew up now seeing Central City as the, you know, biggest shopping center mm-hmm. of life. Now, all of a sudden, I go home. I see Plaza here, Plaza 2, Plaza 3, Plaza 4. I see so many uh, retail spaces. And I look at the population. The population is multiplied. People from Limpopo have gone into the townships and people mm-hmm. coming from other you know spaces so in 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 creating business ecosystems right what sort of thinking cap should uh people who come from townships who are budding entrepreneurs and i think you, you, it was a big challenge when you say why are you here and not doing the same in, in the township i was like <laughs> why did he just ask that no 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 but it's a it's a big ask, right? Yeah. You know, sure. what sort of thinking cap should we be wearing as business entrepreneurs that are based in the suburbs, based in in, in places like this, uh, in order for us to go and plow back and go and and start working in the townships? What what sort of mindset or what should we be doing? In, yes, I don't think I fully understand. Your so opinion. so people like us, mm-hmm. there's people like you who are doing property development mm-hmm. uh, in the townships. How can we bring you know? Our, our heads together to actually make a high impact in the township. What should we be doing? We as who? Black people. Black people. And developers. Yeah, or <laughs> you should be doing more than, <laughs> than just going back for a victory lap. It's <laughs> for one, for certain. No, yeah. No, listen, there's... there's as a, entrepreneurs, more than yeah. being black, for me, I think it's no, no, listen, any entrepreneur you, who, you, wants to, you, who wants to go back into, into, into doing more... Listen, where the, there's establishment. The, the, the townships are very cash generative businesses. There are a lot of free cash flowing around in the townships. Mm-hmm. So in Ekoka and all these guys have done well on card payments, but listen, there's, there's, you know, what should you be doing? There's so much to be done. Yeah. And it depends on what you want to be, what you want to get involved in. Um, you know, the, the, the townships are such a rural, uh, such vibrant spaces. There's such mm-hmm. an amazing energy in there. Uh, people are resilient. 
Um, and I always laugh when I when I go to a dinner party and these and are saying, you know, we've got such the roads are falling apart. They've got such bad potholes. I said, well, you must go into Mama Lady. And yeah. Go and look what what the people in the townships have to deal with. It's, it's but they're resilient, you know, yeah. and and there, there are businesses that are thriving. Um, and it's for me. So we did our second collab in Mama Lady, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. and some amazing brands there. Yeah. Uh, third one we're going to roll it out in Edenvale, and hopefully we'll have one in every area that can sustain one, that we've mm-hmm. got enough creatives from that local area. Because that's one thing I haven't mentioned. One of the, I think, a stroke of brilliance um, that my dad had in the early days was his very strictly local first policy. So no. uh, we, wow. we, we look at a big part of any more development is involved in working with the community, making sure that it's people from the local areas, that, that the people that will shop that are deemed to be local, or people that can shop at that development. Mm-hmm. Um, and we must then evenly source uh uh-huh. employment from all the various wards all and it's that's in itself is a, a business in, in itself sure uh, but you know what, what what do you have for local entrepreneurs patrick moraka was yeah. was a a guy who approached us when we did tembisa plaza uh, andrew mapeto drive yeah um in tembisa in would have been the early 2000s and he wanted a car wash but, yeah. we, but, we, but he was pushy, and but we liked the guy, and he ended up winning the contract to clean them all. Oh, and he, wow. and he went from there, he went on to five, six malls. Um, he then became our CLO during our Mall of Timbisa, which was our biggest ever development. Yeah. We, we did yeah. that during lockdown, Jeez. opened in 2020. Crazy stuff. Um, yeah. And I now believe he's doing, um, with his brand in Papua, doing other you know, liaison work for other, for other people. Um, and, and that was just through a guy that, that had... The passion. The passion. And he, he started out, he wanted to wash cars. He ended up washing shopping centers. Yes. Sir. And and, and it's now got his own fully fledged business on, on the site doing doing really well. And so there's a lot of opportunities you've got to find find where they are. And there are a lot of opportunities from, yeah. you know, one of the guys, head, head of digital, Bongani's head of digital at Exemplar. Mm-hmm. He joined us. He was an intern. He joined us from Tembisa. And he was telling me how he was, how he started out making Mokwenya, um for his, with his, and then selling his, his, his uncle's Mokhul. Uh, and and his pricing strategies and how yeah, and yeah. that's how I used to hustle, you know. He was he was a, he was a student, but he was he was grafting, was hustling and grafting. Yeah, and yeah. that's, and that's yeah. at the end of the day, is you never you can never stop hustling, you can never stop trying, you can never stop pushing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and mm-hmm. there's an old saying: you can't catch a fish if your line if your line's not in the water. Yeah, make sure yeah. you've got lots of lines in the water. You know, keep pushing. Fantastic. And 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 you you men with green fingers, you know, some of the <laughs> one of the things I, I, I actually dug out in terms of what you are you are doing. Um uh all right, is it fine? Okay. So, so yeah, some of the things that, that, that you're doing around the green space. Um I attended one of the trist sessions and mm-hmm. someone was talking about um they do mall yes, yes, it's mall the planting and stuff, no, hydroponic. Yeah. And she, and she was telling me I'm wasting water in my market garden <laughs> down at the bottom there. I'm very yeah. pr- I'm, listen, I'm very proud of that. That yeah. um, Seokula yes. uh, uh, cooperative. There were people that were were farming adjacent to Moor before we built it in Tembisa, um, and you know we've set up a, a couple of hectares for them that they're farming very successfully at the moment. Yeah. Um, and listen, urban agriculture for me is something that's got huge potential. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's you know we've got to encourage more people to grow their own food. Um, there's no doubt about it. We've got great, great soils, and, and you know, for the past couple of years, we've had good rainfall going forward. Let's see what um, El Nino brings. But uh, <laughs> but certainly, you know, yeah, there, yeah. there is there's huge there is huge potential. You know, we we come from an uh, agrarian background, all of mm. us. Is uh, it? You know, no, uh, myself, yes. I come okay, from, I come all from right. a farm, but all of us. <laughs> um, and, and in some way, yeah, hundred percent. And, and and there's yeah. a lot more to be more to be done. I was talking about the one that we're doing now at Chakuma, um, yeah. the development will open yeah, yeah, in, in yeah. September. But yeah, to and do in turn, uh, we'll open that in September, and that's next to the, the one of the biggest um, fruit and veggie markets I've seen. Sure. Um, so I'm looking forward to. Yeah, we're to talking about that, that and community. the potential in that particular, yeah. you know. So, so it's, it's we're, amazing stuff. We're, yeah. We're, yeah, we're not just doing that. We're doing we're doing a photo, we're doing a, a pilot photo project, uh, which will hopefully then roll out to, <laughs> to other communities to provide f- a photo for for mm-hmm. livestock. Oh. Um, again, using using uh, wastewater, from, recycled water, from, recycled from, the from the mall wow. to to grow the animal feed. Um, so lots, lots of lots of small exciting things. That's on fantastic. The side, yeah. I mean, one of my guests last time, in, in fact, the last guest that we had was uh, chief director of the. Gauteng, um, 
agriculture and forestry. And okay, you were yeah. saying that they're looking to see more spaces where they can do agroponics. Um, yeah, I understand. And I think it's... it's but that you can do anywhere. You can do anywhere, yeah. yeah, yeah. So they've got uh, a project they're doing at uh, one of the four ways malls. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's one project that is also growing. So it, it looks like malls themselves are now becoming spaces for alternative... Especially, uh, especially if, if they've got a lot of space for hydroponics. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so I think that the, there's, there's big potential. Now, tell me a little bit. You know, many businesses, and I think there's more questions that are there... Oh, the person says they are, I'm from Tata, a property professional. For many years, um, you just have to go to town by month end and the neighboring towns. Kumbu, Tulum, Solo, Mount Frey, Dutua, Mkanduli, and all of that. But see, what, what's it? I can't see that. Yeah, I think it's... Uh, yeah, so, so we actually opened in, in Mount Freya now called Kobaka. We opened there at the end of last year. We'll start within, hopefully, within a month in, in Edutra. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we're, we're still working on something in the Mtata. Um, but, no, I haven't been to... We don't have anything planned for the other one. There's also Whittle C. Uh, mm -hmm. If you see that one at the top there, Mneti C says that... Uh, interesting, where's Whittle C, especially... For a new brand, uh, uh, promised our rich, ag given our rich agriculture potential. So Whittle C, where's Whittle C is also out in the yeah, I'll in I'll the Eastern Cape. Yeah, I'd have to, I'd have to have a look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so another question that is there, which I see, is around recycling. So, are there opportunities yes, in huge. relation to collection of waste, recyclable? material at your malls? Uh, listen, I, th I think where we're going with our waste policy is, is zero to landfill as, as soon as we can. Oh, um, wow. So we've got um, not just pilot, we've got quite advanced composting um, facilities mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. uh, and working with now breaking down the full suite of organics down into feedstock, then that would circular go back into the market gardens and everything mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. So, so very, yeah, you want to create a full circle of a circular of economy, ecosystem. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. And then, nice. and, and that's what we're doing in Tembisa with the with the farmers at, at the Mall of Tembisa. They're providing the vegetables for the for the restaurant at, at Mazwani's um, in Biza, she's in Yama. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's literally it's the, beautiful. I must say, your architect, uh, architect architectural designs of of Tembisa Mall is just yeah, they, they amazing. Came out yeah. nicely. Yeah. It's amazing where she sits and that uh, <laughs> escarpment. I mean, it's it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah, I see. That's um, uh, let me see. Small town builds groceries. Okay, someone commenting around. There's a lot that is happening during month end and oh and no everything. listen listen month end ground time it's the, that, that's a problem we need to deal with uh, as problem as, as, <laughs> no it, it is it's a big. Pro, it's a problem people are, are grossly inconvenienced having yeah. to queue for as long as they have to queue mm -hmm. for, mm -hmm. sorry. and and um, no so it is it is I see it as a problem because yeah. uh, you know people are spending an inordinate amount of their day having to wait to get money um, and. There could be other ways. No, of listen, and we, you know, retail is is well, but the private sector is answering the call now. You having you know your supermarkets are, mm. are able to to work with the grants, and, yeah. and the more yeah. retailers that we can get to disperse it, become merchants. Yeah, yeah become merchants, the better yeah. because yeah. you know then we can at least spread that waiting time. People aren't having just to to stand in the sun for as long as they're having to currently. Sure. And so, Shanguve Pretoria, Mabupati, somebody says, I see that you're doing. What any other mall developments in the Pretoria, Soshangu, and Mabopane area? Um, <laughs> the, mall, the, <laughs> the malls that I can tell you about are, are the ones that 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 I'm out talking about. So there's yeah. there's yeah, there are a lot of developments that I unfortunately can't can't talk can't, about. Can't yeah. speak about yet. You see, you know, people say, "Are oh, you looking there? Are you looking there? Are you yeah, looking no, there?" No, 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 no. Yeah. Totally understood. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, some of the things are strategic places. Yeah, so, that, yeah. that are there. Yeah, no, fantastic. So. As a businessman, I want to ask you this question. I always ask people. Um, we get to business and then, you know, we think we've got it. We think we know it. And then, boy, oh, boy, school fees. We end up paying school fees. Can you just relate one or two areas where you've actually got a proper lesson? Proper hiding. Uh, Africa, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Africa gave giving me a good bucks line. Is it? Yeah. No, it's just because it, it's so foreign. Yeah, you know, yeah. in terms of that whole environment that you're dealing with here, you're dealing with a, mostly a rule book and and 
tenants you understand and mm, mm. due process and, and yeah. everything else. Whereas in Africa, you're dealing with exchange rate fluctuations and, and, and all of that on top of systems you don't understand, legal systems, property systems that you don't understand. It it was, well, I spent the best you know, 10 years, I suppose, you know, putting wow. putting schemes together mm. you know, on the side of doing what we were doing here locally, yeah, but, yeah. but traveling a lot up into Africa, up into Kaduna, um, Kumasi, Lagos, um, East Africa as well. Uh, we were up in Luanda in 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 Angola. In Angola. In Angola. Oh, you know th that was the best money we were ever lost. <laughs> I think that we, you know that we. Yeah, many people have got a lot of stories to tell about yeah, Angola. Yes, we, like we only lost a, a little bit of money relative to <laughs> what, what, what what we could have. So so you know from my side, in terms of the you know the, the stick to stick to your knitting. I think that's what okay. uh, we or everything seems <coughs> to, but you can't parachute in from as an external and yeah, and, and yeah. put put that kind of stuff. You know, as I said when we started this interview, retail is detail. There is so much that goes into. I making remember these that things. retail is detail. One hundred percent. There's so mm -hmm. much going into making each one of these things work. They're like a, they're like they're like a, a human body with each organ, each retailer playing a part in making sure the fu the, the the body functions correctly. Mm -hmm. And yeah, up to, you know, listen, I'm still there. We, we've just got enough on our plate locally. And one of my dad's favorite things is always finish what's on your plate. Yeah. And we've got a lot of good retail locally. So listen, <clears throat> still got um, plans for Africa uh, yeah. in time, but certainly that was a, that was a, a proper lesson. And unless you're willing to commit to something that you don't understand 100%, sure. then don't touch it. Even when well, you work with partners that are mm, based in a different geography. Mm -hmm. It's just like. That's that's rough, eh? Well, it depends. If if they if they're also putting in their side of the money, then it, then then it, they, 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 their skins in the game. Yeah, and I suppose that's where we went wrong. Is, ah. is, is we bankrolled uh, a lot some of some of the projects. Yeah, yeah. A, a lot of it, and then you you just you get a hundred percent of the stress for less than hundred percent of the the reward, basically. Sure. So. But yeah, so the, 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 you know that's the only real big school fee. I think we as a, as a, as a company we've remained fairly conservative in everything that we've done. Um, you know, we, we don't start building a shopping center before it's leased, for argument's sake. Oh. Uh, you know, so we lease first before, so we design it to the specifications. We we get of the, the tenants of the tenants, yeah. yeah. So we cost all of that down to the the last cent before we've raised the money, and or, mm. uh, we raise the money at the time. Um, and and so because we've been conservative there, and under the guidance of my old man. Uh, you know, we've we've fortunately managed to avoid some big school fees other than Africa. Yeah, um, yeah. You can't buy experience, eh? No, 100%. No, absolutely. <laughs> Wis wisdom and experience. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, no. It, so, so one of the things that really stand out, and you and I started engaging a lot um, during the riots and, mm. um, you know, looking at how you took the the bull <laughs> by its horns and really challenged some of the, the, the thinking. And I don't see that as a school fees, though, mm -hmm. but... What are some of the key lessons that you've learned in working with communities on some of the malls that they're protected and some mm -hmm. of the recoveries that you've had? You know, what are some of the key things that you've learned to appreciate about your your you know working with different ecosystems and working with different leaders? Listen, you know, I, th I think the you know the rebuild process was, I think, felt on both sides. Um, and that was the one one big thing that came through with all of this was, mm. you know, how these communities were three, four months down the line, then realizing, you know, just how, you know, how urgent it was now to get these things up and running again, because the the the, 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 the lifestyle, the functioning of those, those ecosystems that they were mm. used to is, mm. had now been turned on its head. Sure. Um, and, you know, I, I don't think that we've done anything much different from the first time that we built with them. Yeah. Uh, you know, we 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 always work closely with our communities, um, and you know, I, so I, I don't think that there's been any additional learnings that we've learned. We, you know, we've we we're on a we're always on a big drive to be local, to be more, more locally relevant, and community focused, um, and certainly, you know, we doubled down on that to make sure that the community was 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 as involved as possible mm -hmm. during the rebuilds. Um, but wow. it's but it's far more fun to to build something for the first time. So it's nice doing rolling the the new schemes that we've got coming up with with the various communities that we've got got out there. Fantastic. So I, I hear there's some exciting um, projects. So if, if if you haven't gone to Jason's website uh, or if you haven't gone to Exemplar uh, Retail, 
uh, website. Just check there some of the new developments that are coming. And uh, if you're joining us for the first time, this is T-Junction. My name is Tabo Makama, and then I'm your host. We're working a lot and having conversations with leaders in, in, in different spaces. Today, we're talking to Jason McComick, who comes from Exemplar Retail. And uh, we've had good conversation so far. It's been an hour, believe it or not. <laughs> Time flies when you're having fun, right? And I think, I think some of the things that uh, many people ask themselves is that, you know, if I go into big organizations uh, such as Exemplar Retail, I'll find uh, different types of people that are there that are, you know, thinking differently. And you've, you've touched on, 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 on corporate. But as a leader, in terms of leading your organization and, and, and leading your family and, 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 and like that, what, what is your secret formula? We always ask this question to people before we close out. What is your secret sauce? If, if, if someone has to say, passion. Jason, I think what is your secret I think sauce? it's passion. You know, I, I, I'm a very emotional person. I feel very deeply. Yeah. And so I'm very driven by, yeah, that sense of, you know, commitment to a cause um, and and that belief that you know this thing is bigger than me, mm. uh, there's no doubt about that. Um, and and I, I suppose that when you feel you're part of something bigger, um, you're willing to whatever it takes. You're willing to do whatever needs to be done. Um, sure. And yeah, never give up, never stop. Um, and you know, I'm a, I'm a perfectionist um, in where it matters. Mm -hmm. My wife will tell you I, I leave my mess on the floor. <laughs> but you're but, a stickler but, for things that matter not so much as no, the other things. Yeah. But yeah, coming back to retail is detail. You know, uh -huh. at, at the end of the day, you know, we 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 100 committed to what we're doing and focused on only what we do, and that yeah. is township or retail. Um, and and eventually you do something for as long as we've been doing it, and it's kind of second nature. It's just what we do. Our dream business, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it follows me into my sleep. So no, fantastic. Yeah. So so in, in, in closing, what can you say to a budding property developer, somebody who wants to go into the industry? You've touched on a lot of things in terms of in the retail spell, retail is detail. Um, it's a long-term game, but you know, some serious thoughts that they need to put in before committing, because some of the people might take their life savings and mm. might take, you know, uh, money that no, they borrow. To make sure that you can get your return upfront. So understand what your costs are and what your rental will be. Is someone going to rent at that? Mm -hmm. um, and is that an adequate return on the capital that I'm going to spend? You know, it takes a lot to, to do that old field of dreams, build it and they will come. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's where we've seen many people lose their shirts is, yeah. is they've, they've got to make sure you've got a market, make sure whatever, whoever you, you're servicing, do your market research, make sure that, that the market does exist and at the price point that makes financial sense for whatever money that you're going to have to invest. Mm -hmm. um, you know, always do your homework first. Um, but sometimes, you know, it, you've got to go with your gut. So gut plays but a role. Yeah. The gut does know this, no doubt about it. Yeah. You know, I, I, when, when I first, we, we won the tender to, to partner with Putt Prop and some developments and, and Dobsonville, the old Putco bus depot site opposite, yeah, yeah. opposite the Dobsonville mall. Um, and I looked at it from, from Google Earth and I said, I'm not, you know, there's a big mall there already. You know, I'm not so keen on it. You know, but yeah. we, we won that until I got onto site and, and, you, and you feel the energy. You just feel the vibe. You're just like, wow, there's something here. This is what I want to do. And, and that's what, for me, property will never do anything without being, being on the ground, feeling uh -huh. the energy, feeling the vibe, seeing the traffic, seeing the people. Getting a feel for it. So yeah, you've been to more townships than I have. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure yeah. you've been to more townships than rural spaces. But listen, than, in the old like, days, yes, you know, so. I've, I started long before Google Earth. So yeah. in the old days, I you used to drive, to drive, 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 drive. Jeez. Did a lot of driving, a lot of flying. A lot yeah. of driving, yeah. No, fantastic. So this is Jason McComick, and uh, he's from Exemplar Retail. And thank you very much to all that have joined us um, on T Junction. My name is Tabo Makama, bringing to you. Uh, a very awesome, I call him the property champion, the township property champion, and <laughs> he's doing fantastic stuff. I must tell you, he's one guy who's very responsive. He may be busy, but very responsive. And so if you find yourself working with exemplar retailer or being a tenant and stuff like that, you would totally understand what I'm talking about. But uh, I think, Jason, thank you very much for making time. And um, we always tell people this is a, a mini university that's we, that we're trying to you know, impart for many of the entrepreneurs. When you start distributing the material to different people, 
to get to land, to hear it, you know, firsthand mm. from individuals that are in the business and not someone who's coming up with their very MBA yeah, theoretic yeah. nonsense, but uh, <laughs> someone who's really, you know, rolled their sleeves and have been in there and got, you know, down and dirty with the business and they understand the challenges that are there. And uh, my challenge, you know, to everyone who comes on is to say, you know what, where there is opportunities to keep on sharing the information with mm. us so we can just share with the individuals that are, you know, following us and the individuals that are talking to us on a regular mm. basis. But um, keep on doing what you're doing and building others and, you know, building malls and townships. I mean, for me, for many days, I've, I've, I've seen how the impact of individuals who never had jobs because they had to take two taxis to town to go and work. But now a person can actually walk to the mall, which is something we never even touched. The economics and the transformation that happens in opening a retail site next to where I live is that I don't catch a taxi, but the part of my salary that comes, I can be able to grow the space I live mm. in and, 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 and be able to have a you know good livelihoods. So for me, it's 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 more than just building, it's more than property that you're providing to excuse me, to to the people, it's hope, it's opportunity, it's economics, yeah, it's it's massive. You mm. you 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 might think you know the portion of it. Mm. But as you say, it's bigger than you yeah, and 100%. it's bigger than all of us. And I think if all of us start thinking differently around what we do, the type of businesses that we go into, the impact that it gives and, you know, getting people to get to understand what is it that you can do to empower others, to grow others, to to create spaces that are going to make sure that it's a legacy for, for next generation. Jason just showed us how he works in a, in, in a company that he's been working with his dad. It's a generational thing. So as you're an entrepreneur, as you build, build for generations, build for legacy, make sure that what you're doing has got impact for other people. This is Tabo Makamati Junction host, and I'm just uh, very appreciative of the time that you've given me. You've allowed me to just impart knowledge. You've allowed Jason to also share his personal story and the business. And thank you very much until we meet again. Uh, goodbye. Sure. Oh, she's went quick, eh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The hour goes quick. The yeah. hour goes quick. Awesome. Yeah, fantastic. Dude, thanks very much. I like really it. appreciate you. Yeah, man. pleasure. Thanks, yeah, very, yeah. thanks very much, guys. So, thank you very much. And uh, I'll be in contact. Yeah, I like it. <coughs> Mr. Mapa, how are you doing? So, this is one of the guys that is uh, in the last mile. Oh, is it? Yeah, last month delivery. Oh, okay. yes. uh, especially it's a visa because you said food is not paid. Yeah. It's not paid. Yeah. So these guys are supposed to be better. So they want to 